All reasonable people would agree that the recent terrorist attacks against Coptic Christians in Libya, as well as the previous attacks in Paris and Denmark, have been good for no one. To begin with, Islamic radicals are witnessing Western powers digesting more of their territories in the Middle East and elsewhere. The Jewish community are witnessing increasing amounts of anti-Semitism in different quarters. The Muslim mainline leadership has experienced a moral crisis and themselves are the victims of attacks by the same radicals. Western liberals are lamenting the collapse of freedom, equality and fraternity. So it seems that nobody is smiling or laughing. It's ironic that the West and the Muslim world seem to be united around their own lamentations. Both Muslim leaders in the world as well as Western leaders have been denouncing such atrocities. We are all barking up the same tree. We agree it's the right tree, but we don't seem to make a difference for the good of the world. So much of this depends on mutual comprehension and understanding. In the West, most people are not aware of Islam's system of authority, and they can't make a distinction between the radical and the orthodox. They also can't understand how, in the circumstances, Muslim leaders do not have control over the zealot fringes. Muslim leadership itself often ex tried to explain that to the West, and they also are reluct reluctant on occasion to cooperate with Western policies, which often appear more than temper tantrum than policy. In the Middle East as well, there is a lack of comprehension about the West. There is a lack of good religious leadership as well as a collapse of political leadership that understands Western concerns properly. If you read Middle Eastern papers, you often come to see or to think that America is led by Bible-built Christians who have anti-Muslim fulminations trying to propagate American forms of Christianity in the world. All of this requires, as I said, kind of mutual comprehension and understanding. So where do we go? Here at Tantur, the Ecumenical Institute for Theological Studies in Jerusalem, I spent a year of preparing a book based on my research relating to the medieval Muslim theologian Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, who was the pre-modern normative teacher of Islam. Reading his text was very clear that for people like him, extremism was not a popular move. He argued against it. He preached against it. He tried to provide a common good vision for his own society that itself was fighting uh, different groups and was not at peace within itself. So what is needed is perhaps a kind of religious leadership that is aware and that can take risks to follow its own sources, its own traditions, to be able to distinguish between the orthodox and the radical, to, to be able to lead its own peoples and stand up for the poor in its own societies and to risk its own lives. At the same time, we need the sort of Western leaders who have the enlightened visions of acknowledging that the common good, the good of the other, depends on the good of everybody else. And a place like Tantur provides the civic space for that kind of conversation. It's based on the Christian ethic of self-giving, mutual, upbringing of the community, <clears throat> building of the community, where people of different loyalties and belongings can engage in one, with one another in conversation. And that kind of conversation should be supported and 
should be the ideal for any secular democracy, whether here or elsewhere. The state ought not prevent that sort of conversation, but ought to aid it, ought to help it. It ought to help it so that it provides a space, a civic space, for conversations done with civility.